Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are doing day 8 dictionaries and maps, and we are learning about how we can store a key value pair mapping using a C map data structure. For this task, this is a great example of how we can use the map data structure to store a mapping of name to phone numbers. And in this task, we are given exactly that n names and phone numbers, and we have to assemble a phone book or a C map data structure that maps each friend's name to their respective phone numbers. We will then be given an unknown number of names to check if it exists in the phone number, in, sorry, in the phone book. And for each of these names, we have to print the associated entry from the phone book on a new line in the form name equals the phone number. If the entry is not found in the C++ map data structure, then we will print not found instead. So the input looks something like this. The first line consists of n numbers of name to phone number pairings, followed by exactly n name and phone number pairings to be passed. And following that, we will have an unknown number of lines, and each line consists of a single name. So this time, HackerRank isn't so nice to help us with the input, so we have to figure this out ourselves. So with that, let's get started. The first thing is to define a temporary integer n variable, and this will store the number of name to phone number pairings. So let's read that in from the C in input stream object and ignore up to 100 white space characters or until we see the new line character. At this point on line 50 and line 16, we are done passing the first line. Our job next would be to iterate n number of times to read the corresponding names and phone numbers into a map data structure. So to do that, let's quickly define a map data structure that consists of a string key as well as a string value. And let's assign this to a name of phone book, just like this. And the next step would be to iterate n number of times. So we can do that with a single for loop like this. So for every single line that we read in, we would have to see in both the name together with the phone number. And we can store both strings, in this case, as a name and a phone number temporary variable. We will start to see in the name together with the phone number. And once we're done, we can ignore all subsequent white space characters that follow after it. At this point, we have both the name and the phone number, and we are ready to add this into our phone book data structure. So we can do that with a function on this map data structure, which is insert. And insert, as you can see, it takes in a pair of strings and strings. So we can define a, a pair of strings and strings and pass the name as the first key and the phone number as the value key. So just like this, we are done adding every single name to phone number pairings inside our phone book over here. The next step would be to consistently check if there is still a line that follows afterwards. And for each of these lines, these are a given name, and we have to check whether if this name exists in the phone book. So with that, let's quickly define a temporary current name string variable. And inside, we can use a combination of a while loop together with this getLine function to check whether if the current line exists. So we can use getLine, and we will check see if there is a current line. And if there is a current line, this getLine function would return a boolean true. And this will also, at the same time, read in a single line from C in input object into the string current name variable. And at this point on line 30, we're ready to start processing this given name. And how we exactly process it, we're going to check whether if this current name exists in the phone book. So to do that, we can do phone book dot find followed by the key that we are finding. And this function will return an iterator that points to the value for this given current name. And if this current name exists in the phone book, this iterator will not point at the end of the phone book, which is phonebook.n. So phonebook.n will return an iterator that indicates the end of the phone book. In other words, if the current name exists in the phone book, then the iterator will not be at the end of the phone book. So on line 30, what we're really saying is if the current name exists in the phone book, then on line 31, we will be able to safely access the value for this corresponding current name. So to do that, we will do cout followed by the name 
we're trying to format the output of this given line over here. The first part of the line would be the current name, followed by an equal sign, followed by the corresponding phone book current name. And we'll do an end line after the end of this printing. Else, in this case on line 33, this represents the case if the current name doesn't exist in the phone book. So if that doesn't exist in the phone book, we can print out not found. And we can follow that with an end line character over here. And at this point, we're done with this question. Let's run this against some of the sample test cases. This passed. And let's submit this. And this passes all the test cases. In summary, we learned how we can create our own map data structure. We learned how we can define both the key and the value type. And we also learned how with a combination of a for loop, we read in both the key and value and prepared a pair to be inserted into the phone book over here. Once we are done, we also explored how we are able to consistently read for as many lines as we can using the get line function combined with a while loop. And we also learned how we can check whether if a given key exists in the phone book using the find function on the phone book and comparing whether if this given iterator is pointing at the end of this map data structure. And finally, we also learn how we can get a corresponding value from a given map given a key. And with that, that's the end of this video. If you find this useful, please give us a like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.